Hi everyone, here I am, sat in a plastic clad bus, um, preparing for some rust busting. So this week's video, we're gonna progress to removing all the rust from our chassis, have a look at those crusty wheel arches that we've shown you in previous videos, and trial fit our Ford Tornado custom seats. So thanks for joining. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please give us a comment and a like if you do. Um, any tips, really welcome. So hope you enjoy. In our previous video, we showed you the floor and it kind of looked like this, and this is where the heater was. Okay, so this empty space here was where our diesel heater was and will be once it goes back in or replacement goes back in. Um, so I've taken it out today, you can see the harness there. Uh, here it is over here. So it's actually a D4 unit. Hoping I can get it going actually. So any tips on that would be welcome. However, the box that it was in is kaput. Today I've removed the metal sides, that, uh, the sort of framing that was all up the sides here. The idea being we're gonna clean all in behind, see what's what, um, and eventually we'll be replacing that with ply anyway for our walls. That should go from sort of floor level all the way up to under our little windowsill. You can see the horrors here. We began cleaning the chassis down with a power washer just to remove the sort of thickest grime that was in there. Then applied a general purpose degreaser, sort of let that soak in and then washed it all down again. I also took the time to remove this rusty old wheel carrier and this is the, what I was left with. So a slightly cleaner space to work and the chassis ready to be needle gunned and sanded back. The needle gun is an amazing tool, but it's really loud and creates quite a lot of mess. Here I am needle gunning the steps. It's really actually quite user friendly. Just like with anything, take your time. Don't apply too much pressure with it, but I was pleasantly surprised at how easy it was to use, um, especially as it didn't cause sort of any damage to the underside metal. So you can see that you know it's fairly brutal on that scaled scaled rust there, but it hasn't caused any damage to the metal underneath. So yeah, really would recommend getting one of these if your steps look like that. This is what it looked like after. Uh, at which point I removed the old lights, which were cracked, and then used a heat gun and paint stripper to remove all of the paint. The cab also had some gnarly surface rust that I needed to tackle. I'm doing a little test of this deox gel, just on the step part here, um, just to see how it comes up. So the instructions say, Brush it on or roll it on one to two millimeters, leave for 30 to 60 minutes, and then brush with a wire brush. So I'm gonna give that a go. The results, I forgot to photograph, but they were pretty good. Uh, once it had dried back, you have to clean this stuff right up. So here's a picture of the cleaned metal. At this point, I did apply um, a rust converting product from gel at night, which turned it purple and then I went on to painting. So I decided to use a product from Buzzweld called Rust Encapsulator. So any errant rust that was left over, this product will actually bind to it and then convert it back from to, to good metal within nine months. It's really clever stuff, but it does stink. So this is the steps dry in, you know, you, hopefully you can see the difference. And this was it a few weeks later after me walking on a lot. So you can see that it's hard wearing. And this was one coat of, on the cab. After this was all dried, I did a second coat and then moved on to the main chassis. First job, removing this sealant from all down the side so I can get to rust busting. I've just done this bit. Like anything, it's taken a long time. Upfront health warning, rust busting is filthy business. So I masked up and wore protection. So here you can see the state that the chassis was in. Um, unfortunately, it's a lot worse than most. 
but not as bad as some. So, you know, we counted ourselves lucky. The tool that I'm using here is called a needle scaler or a needle gun. It's actually an attachment that goes on your air chisel. So it bolts on over the top of there and then it's powered by your air compressor. And it's like a bunch of long metal sort of needles that come out the end of the gun and vibrate at high speed to help you remove layers of paint, um, loose sort of flakes of rust, as you can see here. So what I did with my entire chassis, and the whole chassis was like this, by the way, um, was go over, first of all, with the needle scaler. So I went all over it, top and bottom, to remove all of this loose material. What this doesn't do is remove the sort of finer rust so what i used for that was an angle grinder with a flat disc on it went up went at it with that to remove absolutely as much as i possibly could um and i also used that flat disc to remove the high weld spots that you can see um in the middle of this beam here which was from the bus frame that was put in this process did take a fair while but it was so worth it. I think all in all, it took me about 18 hours from start to end to strip this back and repaint it. So this is kind of like what it looked like after I'd needle scaled. And this is what it looked like after I'd hit it with that flap disc. At that point, I degreased all of it and used some of that rust converter to just get it back to bare metal and then I thought I'd paint but of course mother nature had the last laugh with the most torrential rainstorm we've had in a while which did reveal a few interesting things first and foremost the driver's door is completely out of line at the moment so I need to loosen that off and adjust the door because it leaks in quite a major way it also revealed that each and every one of the bus windows seems to have a quite major leak in it. So I've already sealed some of these up, but oh we'll need to do a better job of that in the really near future. So any tips on that will be really welcome. The past couple of days I've been um, needle gunning and angle grinding and sanding back the top chassis rails and they've come really well actually. Um, Seeing as you know, covered in tons of surface rust. This morning, I am applying some rust encapsulator, and I've got this far. It's taking me about an hour and a half. Um, so I could crack on with the rest of it, and then hopefully do a second coat. This stuff dries really quickly. Um, but obviously, I can't paint that fast. So wish me luck. The painting went on throughout that day. Um, to get two coats on there. I decided that I would wear full PPE because this stuff is just really smelly and would recommend that to anybody. Even though the bus had no floor, this, that and the other, it really did stink. I managed to take some photos of the finished product. So here's the undercoated rails. I was so pleased with how smooth they came out. It really was worth the effort. Obviously, we'll be overcoating this in the near future with some chassis paint. And we've got the task of the wheel arches. After some light finessing by Dave with the angle grinder, we managed to get the floor back in temporarily so we could see where we wanted to put our new Ford Telneo seats. So these can go forwards or backwards. Whilst the floor was out, we decided to fill all of those holes that were in the phenonic ply with oversized dowels. Hold then. Which hole? That one, yeah. Oh, you pop it back in. Ready to hammer it? Yes. Not too hard. Go on then. Oh. I don't want to put it. Can you help me hold it? Because it's too heavy. Three, one, two, three. Go. 
good. I done that. Let's um. So, mummy hammer and you do the glue. No, I like doing the hammer because I done that. Done. Next one, then. Done. Next one. <laughs> Put it back in the hole. This the right way? Yeah. Oh, Careful. As we took the floor out, they very kindly routed down all of the dowels. Today we've been busy making this jig for our seat frames, um, which is going to allow the welder Luke when he comes to see where the box section needs to go for our supports. And this is the box section in place, ready for us to drill. Next thing we did was use that jig to rest on top of the frames. So today we've been uh, mocking up once again for the however many time um, actually on the metal frames this time. So we're ready to weld in the captain nuts. And then hopefully after that, I can paint it all up and get the wooden floor back down. We tried them forward facing and rear facing to make sure they fit. Luke sent me these pictures, which very much excited to me of the captive nuts that were going to be welded on underneath. Um, we didn't have enough because I miscounted them, so I had to make some real rough ones um, for him to use on the day. This is ready to be painted up with captive nuts in. Um, probably going to weld in a couple of pieces across here just to brace it. Again, looking nice and good, nice and strong. When we picked up the bus, we noticed that it developed an oily smell when warm. And that was because this boot that sits on top of the gearbox was split. So I replaced it with genuine parts. Um, the reason I wanted to call out in this video is like, you'd expect Mercedes to perhaps be dearer than online retailers. But in this instance, that one part would have cost me about 30 pounds to be delivered. From Mercedes, it was about 21 pounds, but, but that included the gasket, the circlip, delivery, and an upper boot as well, for less than the one part would cost me online. So here's the biggie. It is another photo montage. The reason being is we hired in a really decent welder and fabricator called Luke from Allen Automotive. So what he did first was cut round to and down to where the good metal was on these arches and then built them back up. So we've got a new lip on this side of the vehicle. We had some repairs done in and around the collar to make sure it was nice and strong. And that was all cleaned up and painted. And then he came back sort of like the, the next week to spend a, a, another few hours creating this beautiful top out of two mil steel um, and some nice new side collars there taking time to weld all of the pinholes up um, and doing just a spectacular job of it. Next up, I painted them up with some red oxide paint to make sure it wasn't going to go rusty. These will all be painted up with chassis paint in the near future, and I'm going to show you how I underseal this too. And that brings us to the end of this week's video. So next week, hopefully going to be able to show you the finished article of that second wheel arch. And we managed to find that the bus has another little bit of a problem. Um, so our front arch here is a little bit holy. So we're going to be fixing that up. And I'm going to be showing you how we've installed the tank structures for our water tank and gas tank. And the chassis paint that we've chosen to use. So good progress this week. Um, thank you for joining us. If you've liked, please just give us a thumbs up. Any comments? They're really motivating, so please drop them down below. And if you um, want, want to follow us on our journey for co converting our bus, please do su consider subscribing. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. See you soon. Bye.